Good morning, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. There's a tree that I pass every evening on my walk and I wanted to share it with you because it captures my attention all summer long and is a tree to consider for a larger permaculture design. This is the Northern Catalpa. You can see that it has these gorgeous white flowers flecked with purple and little bits of yellow. It smells amazing all July long and it is absolutely covered in several species of bumblebees when it is in flower. The northern catalpa, catalpa speciosa, grows in zones four through nine. However, in zone nine, it may need additional watering. This tree does prefer moist soils, which is probably why it thrives so well in western Oregon. Now, in some areas of North America, it is considered invasive, and in others, it is native. Even in its native range, it is known to spread readily. I have noticed out on my walks every year that there are little volunteers in the neighbor's yards around this tree. When looking at whether or not this is the right tree for your permaculture system, let's think about the value that it brings. It's incredibly beautiful. The tree has enormous clusters of blossoms that are intensely fragrant. It brings in those native bumblebees, wasps, and hoverflies. It is a great insectary plant to provide additional food for pollinators. Permaculture principle, obtain a yield, tells us that we need to look at what we can get out of the energy that we put into a system. So when we add the catalpa tree, what other yields does it provide for our effort? The catalpa tree is the sole host of the sphinx moth. And in many parts of the southern U.S., this tree is grown with the knowledge that it will be covered in sphinx caterpillars, which are harvested as bait for fishing. If you're considering growing this tree, know that it can get up to 90 feet tall, although it tends to top out closer to 60. I'm actually a little surprised to find it here in our neighborhood because it is going to be a very large canopy tree when it is mature. In my experience, Portlanders of years gone by had a tendency to plant trees that they really enjoyed but didn't think about what they would be like at maturity and what they would be gifting or burdening future homeowners with. If you are in a residential area, please consider that even though this tree is gorgeous and fragrant, it will get very large and it will also produce seedlings that you may be gifting to your neighbor's yards. And we need to consider the impact not only to ourselves and our garden, but also future gardeners of our space and folks in our community. Now, I don't want to dissuade you from considering this tree for your permaculture system, but it is important that we make sure we are setting ourselves up for success and our trees up for success. So make sure this is a tree that will thrive in your climate and that you have the correct system to support it and that it will bring a benefit instead of a burden to your permaculture system. I think the catalpa is a really beautiful example of a tree you can add to a zone five where it has room to sprawl and get very large or a zone four as well. Provide that additional insectary benefit. Provide that additional enormous yield of pollen and nectar for our bees and wasps and hoverflies, but also planting it responsibly and situating it in a situation where it is able to thrive and not have a detrimental impact on the area in which it is growing. In more southern locations, this tree tends to flower in late May and June. In my climate, it flowers in July. After the blossoms have faded, the tree still provides a lot of visual interest as it is covered in these drapey, long, 
bean pods. Now, these bean pods are not edible. I have seen some social media posts where folks try to eat them. Please don't do that. It will give you a really rough time. But these decorative pods provide continual visual interest. As you can imagine, though, as they are filled with beans, they also have the potential to provide lots of volunteers. If you're considering Catalpa for your system, I encourage you to do your research and think about whether a gorgeous tree like this with its beautiful flowers brings enough positives to your system and that you can balance out the way it has challenges. Thank you for watching today. I will be back for my own permaculture garden next time. Please check out my Patreon down below and please remember to click like and subscribe. I'll be back soon. Thanks.